The Top Not Creative Show, The Top Not Creative Show, Seeking Super Smart, Super Talented Superheroes, How to Be Wow, All of the World and All Around, The Top Not Creative Show, The Top Not Creative Show. Hello everyone, this is Shante Schrader and welcome to the show where we seek out the super smart, super talented, and basically the superheroes who are taking over the world and making it super wow. Today we are talking with Ashley Summers. She is the owner of Ashley Nicole Events, which is a planning, styling, and event design firm located out of Denver, Colorado. After years of studying under creative and inspiring industry professionals, Ashley Nicole Events was born. Ashley believed in creating a company that contributed to a world where stylish soirees, oh-so-glam weddings, luxurious interior designs, and chic fashion all collide making magic one event at a time. Armed with a bachelor's degree in law and so- society and an extensive background in corporate events worldwide, Ashley offers a diverse creative background allowing her to execute a seamless event. She brings an equal amount of inspiration, creativity, and precision to every event, no matter how large or small. Her inspiration stems from her love for all things beautiful, from interior design to fashion and everything in between. Her work has been featured worldwide, from international bride blogs to local publications. Additionally, she has a highly successful reputation with industry professionals. She's planned hundreds of events, both nationally and locally, and continues to provide clients exceptional service with her extreme attention to detail alongside her talent for organization, enabling her to gracefully execute every event. And I couldn't be more excited to have Ashley on the show. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. We are so excited to talk to you uh, about all these amazing and beautiful events that you put together. So why don't we jump right in and tell us first how you came to find this niche um, and what turned you on to it and kind of develop that expertise. Sure, absolutely. You know, I I really truly think, and I know this sounds cliche, but I truly believe that I was somewhat born with it from the time I was a child. I would plan my own birthday parties and then throughout... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> throughout my childhood, and of course, when I got to college, I was social chair, um, planning all the parties for my sororities. So it was something that, you know, naturally, it just came to me, and then once I graduated college, I started to go into law, which I had no fun with, and just still found myself wanting to do things in the event industry. So then I went to corporate side just to learn more about, you know, how does the corporate side function with things? Because I knew I kind of had the creative aspect, but I didn't know, could I really follow a budget? Could I follow what, you know, these really high-end clients wanted in terms of, you know, dinners and auctions and things like that? So once I uh, was in that field for a little while, I then decided to do weddings on the side just for friends to try it out, just put my feet in the water. And pretty soon, it, I knew it was my true passion. I knew it was going to be my career. And, um, and that's really how it developed. I then started working for another company in Denver, Colorado, and then launched my company just last year. So while Ashley Nicole Events is new, me as a planner, I've been around for many, many years. Wow. Um, so that's quite a, um, a, a, a switch from going from law into this super creative aspect um was there anything about that that was really nerve-wracking for you yeah you know i i once heard something that um someone had told me they said you know you're only successful at what you love and i truly felt that i loved building relationships with clients my brides and my grooms that i have i love you know hearing their vision of the day and being able to execute that so there was a lot of um i was of course afraid to leave what probably I knew if I studied hard enough I could be a really successful attorney but that wasn't where my passion was and I truly believe that in order for you to be really successful something you have to be passionate about it like I didn't wake up and want to read my law book but I woke up and wanted to play at a party and I think that you know that's important for anyone in any career that you're in I think you have to wake up with that passion because it'll only allow you to excel even more every day 
I love that. And so you launched your company last year. You've been around, you've been planning for it much longer. Um, what type of services do you offer? Obviously wedding, um, but what yeah, does that entail? It's not just showing up and doing a wedding. There's so much more to that. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot. So basically, we offer everything from full planning, whether it's planning a wedding or planning a 40th birthday or anniversary. Um, I just planned a large baby shower. So anything um, full planning we offer. And then we also offer um, day of coordination as well. So if a bride you know, really wants to plan her own wedding but wants someone there to execute it the day of, we offer that service. And then another service that we offer, which is a little bit different than anyone else in our market, is we offer what's called design decor package. And what that means is you can sort of envision it like, you know, your foundation of your home. But you want someone to come in and put the drapes and put the couch and, and you know, make sure all the fabrics line up. And so we're really kind of the interior designer of your wedding day. So everything from your paper products down to how the napkins are folded. We get really, really involved in that process. So if you are someone where you have it all planned out, but you really need someone to create a cohesive style, then we can come in and do that as well. You're like the Pinterest of, <laughs> of the there day. There you go, yes. <laughs> yes, and that is the beauty of Pinterest, I will say. I wish it was around when I got married five years ago because it really allows brides to see things and know if that's their style because oftentimes I feel like it's hard. It's easy for me to visualize something, but then for a client to do that, they need to see a picture. And Pinterest has been allowing them to do that. It's such a great outlet, and I highly recommend it for anyone planning an event. So, okay, you mentioned you, you were married five years ago. I am assuming you planned your own wedding, or did you have someone else do that for you? You know, I worked with a planner, but I definitely found myself planning it. <laughs> I was living in Denver, but I wanted to get married in Washington, D.C., and I knew the importance, and I knew what you could save by having a wedding planner. So I did hire a local planner, which I always suggest because... They know their market. They know the best people to contact. And in addition, you can end up recouping your their planning fee and the amount of knowledge and savings and negotiations they can do on your behalf. Okay, that's a really good tip because you said hiring someone actually will save you in the long run. And I, I imagine a lot of our listeners would think the opposite. Oh, I'll just do it myself. So tell us about that. Talk more about that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and I would say years ago, it would only it was the rich that really hired planners, right? They had the massive budgets, and they were able to sort of splurge on that. But now it's becoming more increasingly popular for the average bride and groom to hire a planner, and that's simply because we can end up actually saving them money. So I always say I try to recoup at least half my planning fee in the amount of savings I can provide for my client. For instance, you know, when I go to get linens for a wedding, mm -hmm. and if a bride goes in there, she's paying full price for that, whereas my company gets 30% off. So I offer that 30% off discount. So she ends up saving hundreds, sometimes even thousands of dollars, depending on how big her order is, on linen. So something as small as that can really help and save. So you're, you know, you're not only getting, you know, the average saving costs, but also, you know, the benefit of reducing the stress. And that's a, one of those, I mean, linens is probably not something I would originally think if I were putting together my own wedding. Like, oh, definitely budget for linens. So I imagine there are a number of items that pop up later that the bride oh, never yeah. realized. <laughs> exactly. There's so many things. And, too, you know, any planner, we're repeat business for florists, photographers, linens, rentals everything you can think of. We're repeat business, so it's more apt for people to want to help our clients and help save. So I always say that hiring a planner, is, whether it's me or someone else, it really is the best decision you can make. Well, you just convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, let's talk about your, your creative process. I'm looking at your website, and I mean, everything is just so beautiful. So I want to know, when you first meet with someone, how you turn kind of what they want or they don't know they want into that visual. Is there a process there for you? 
There is. My first initial consultation, I love to get to know the bride and groom as much as possible. I want to know where they're from, where they grew up. I like to know where they like to shop. I like to know where they like to eat. Um, How did they meet? How did they get engaged? Does she have any photos? Um, What's her Pinterest look like? And oftentimes before I even meet with someone, I'll look to see if a bride has a Pinterest account so I can really kind of get a feel. Is is she rustic glam? Is she country chic? Is she, you know, really modern? Um, That helps me get a sense. But I think generally when I start to speak with someone, uh, honestly, right away I start, like, getting so many ideas. Just by something small, she'll say, you know, oh, you know, I really, I went to this wedding in New York City. It was in a loft. Right away, I know she wants big, open, loft-like settings. She was slightly urban, maybe exposed brick, um, you know, maybe a softer color palette. So things like that will help me, just my brain starts moving, like little pieces. So that way, I can really visualize what she wants. But by definitely for the, from the client standpoint, by as many photos and information that they can provide their wedding planner will ultimately help so that we can create exactly what they wanted and more. Wow. Um, so as, I mean, you're, you're basically figuring out a way to brand them as a couple. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's incredible. It's a little to be able to zero, yeah. Zero in, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just blown away because all these, these. Um, the, I encourage everyone to go to AshleyNicoleEvents.com because it's just everything's just so beautiful, and but there's distinction you can tell with each each um, wedding, and I guess that would be my next question is, is that ever difficult to make sure that, that you find the distinction for them in particular? Uh, sometimes, yes. I would say what can be challenging um, is sometimes a bride will say, for instance, she's getting married at a farm and she wants mason jars and she wants some other things that maybe we've seen mm-hmm. a, a lot of this season, so I try to take it to that next level. Well, if she likes that, then let's try this. Let's try this new linen that is slightly burlap but also has like a sheen to it. So. You know, there's ways that I just try to make it even better than what they imagine, and oftentimes that is challenging, but I think that that's what feeds me every day in trying to come up with the next thing and really try to wow that client so that she gets more than what she was envisioning. So, yes, it can be challenging, but it's also so rewarding when I can do it. <laughs> so where do you, you get your inspirations on a, on a daily basis? Uh, I start every morning off with coffee and looking at blogs, everything from fashion to interior design to then, of course, bridal blogs. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, I'll pin everything I see. It could be something really random like a couch, but maybe the pattern on a couch will remind me of a client. Um, The way that a pillow lays on a couch will will make me think of something I need to do at lounge furniture at at a wedding. So... I get my inspiration from all of that, even fashion, anything and everything related to that kind of um, delicious eye candy mm-hmm. I love to to get off of. I mean, that's, that's it's the best part of my day is really to start it off like that because then already my mind's flowing throughout the day with everything I saw. I love it. I love it. Now, um, what would be maybe two to three tips... Um, you, you've already mentioned a, a couple things that you would want a bride to be, to you know, to know, to think of before she were to meet with you. Sure. You know, I think the big thing is I think, you know, I really suggest that brides start looking at resources online to get to know the wedding industry a little bit more, get to know what they like, what they don't want. Um, you know, I encourage them to just have fun with it. I think that oftentimes, you know, you'll go to a zillion um, bridal blogs and you'll start to just get so overwhelmed with the planning process or you'll become a slave to time management that you really miss out on the joy of wedding planning completely. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to allow yourself to enjoy it, to take your time with it. Um, you know, I suggest go. If you know, if you want to go to a zillion cake tastings, if you have a sweet tooth, do it because you're a bride and you can, <laughs> and that's only going to help you. You know, if you love invitations, take weeks to design your invitations. You know, if you love um, 
bridal dresses. Go to every bridal boutique in your city and try on as many dresses as you can, you know. I really believe it's your wedding, so take care of yourself throughout the planning process, you know. And I also always tell my clients that it means, you know, eat healthy, stay focused, try to reduce your stress and irritability as much as possible through working out, yoga, whatever your um, outlet is. Just make sure you do that throughout the plan planning process so that you'll remember to have fun with it and you'll enjoy every moment because you can't get those days back. So I like everyone to really have fun with it. I love that because I imagine so many brides when it's all said and done, they look back and think, I wish I had (laughs) immersed myself in the experience of it rather than the stress of it. Um, Absolutely. And that's easy to do. And I mean, I was a bride myself. I did it too. You know, I would go days without eating because I couldn't decide on the right color palette and I mean so it's it's a natural thing to become overwhelmed and stressed then but remember not to remember to take it slow and you know go work out or go work for a run whatever it is that you do to help you mentally do that and I think you'll find yourself taking more deep breaths and really enjoying the whole planning process I think that's great advice now let's let's fast forward to uh, the day of what does that look like for you and all the different balls that you're juggling throughout that day? Well, the day of the wedding starts out early for me as a planner. The first thing I do is I check in with every event professional involved in the wedding. So I'll call to make sure the cake is all set because the night before they were setting the cake and baking it. Are they good on the wedding day? You know, if the weather looks bad, I check... So I really start that day off with just checking every single person involved in the day, making sure everyone knows um, they're on time, the weather's good, there's no traffic, um, everything from traffic to weather to checking in with the professionals in the morning. I then go and visit the bride. Um, Obviously, she is just waking up, getting ready for her hair and makeup, and really not worrying about anything that day. Whether you have a planner or not, you should be really simply just enjoying that day and let someone else kind of handle the planning, whether it's your planner or a family friend or something. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I show up to the ceremony and reception site and really start um, getting things set up and ready. Um, Typically, the photographer will come early to take some detail shots of the escort cards or the place cards or the favors, some of the florals, um, her bridal bouquet, things like that. So I make sure that that's all lined in and ready to go. And then, of course, um, I will go and then get the bridal party, take them over to the reception or to the ceremony site, I'm sorry, and make sure that um, all the guests have arrived, the the music is cued, send her down the aisle. Um, Once they come back and recess um, back up the aisle, then, of course, we get into photos and making sure that cocktail hour has started. The musicians are then in place for cocktail hour. And then once that ends, um, the bridal party is taking photos. We then go into the reception, make sure guests are seated, the caterer is cued. Um, typically, they'll have first dance right away, and then we'll go into dinner, and then um, father, daughter, mother, son, and then dancing throughout the whole evening. And my, I'm the first to arrive, the last to leave, so I usually um, get home very late, but I just make sure that at the end of the night, the bride's things are gathered up. That's the one thing I always recommend, is that someone who is reliable can take her veil, her bridal bouquet, all of her gifts, the cards, and load that into the vehicle or into her hotel room. So that way, at the end of the night, she's not having to carry anything out. I like the bride and groom to leave as a guest the way that they should be. Okay, now I can't even imagine doing my own wedding without you. <laughs> oh, um, thank you. All those details that, I mean, you just have it so dialed in. And even, I love that you would say, I want them to arrive as a guest and to leave as a guest. That is just Yes, that's how it should be. (laughs) Absolutely. You should be a guest at your own wedding. Absolutely. And, you know, any planner can make that happen. And if you can't invest into a wedding planner, you know, try to educate yourself. Delegate things to friends and family to help you out so that on your wedding day you're not having to carry large bed, bath, and beyond gifts and cards and your veil and So, you know, just try to delegate because it's your day and you're not going to be able to get that back. So you need to enjoy it and you need to be a guest at your own event. That's awesome. Now, if someone was looking to hire an expert um, such as yourself, what would you suggest they look for as, you know, first top priority? 
Sure. Well, I always suggest when you look for a planner, I say start online. Check out online bridal blogs like The Knot or MyWedding.com um, or bridal blogs. And if a wedding stands out to you, look at the resources to see who planned it. And maybe that planner style is a little bit similar to yours. I then suggest to choose two, or I'm sorry, three to five planners to interview. Once you interview them, I always suggest like paying attention to how they listen, how comfortable you feel with um, with their ideas and their responses. Uh, maybe ask them for references, you know, and check those. I would say trust is your most important component of a great working relationship. So choose someone who you truly believe will be in your best interest and someone that. Um, you know, you're looking forward to spending time with, you're, you know, you find them comfortable to be around, comfortable to email and call. Um, so I would say those are like the most important things to me. I think, you know, there's a right fit for every planner. There's a right fit for every bride in terms of planners. So, you know, just see how comfortable you feel of, around them. But, you know, I always say too, like, go with your gut. Don't overthink it. If you really feel like you connected really well with the second planner, although you really like the first planner you interviewed, go with your gut on what made you feel good because chances are what you felt in your heart is the right decision to make. That's awesome. Now, if someone would like to pursue the, um, a career path similar to yours, what would you recommend they do? So, if they, Sure. If they want to, um, if you want to start uh, wedding planning, I would say, you know, intern with a planning company. Maybe research some planning companies, check out their website, see if their style um, matches yours. If you, you know, get inspired on, on their work that you see on their website, email them, tell them that. Say, you know, I loved your work, I felt inspired by you, I want to assist you. And, you know, just start by interning. I also suggest looking into any type of workshops. Um, I know that um, one workshop in particular is in Denver. Um, Debbie Orwat puts that on for brides who are interested in wedding planning mm -hmm. and attend that because that can really, really help you. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me, and I'm still learning, you know, nine years into it, every event I learn something new. So you can never have too much experience. So really try to get that under your belt because you'll never stop learning in this industry. It changes so fast, so quickly every year that, you know, you'll, that's the beauty of it, but you also have to stay on top of that. So as much experience as you can get in this industry will help you. Love it. Now, you've been doing this for nine years officially with Ashley Nicole Events for the last year. What's, what's next? What's coming up for Ashley Summers? You know, that's a great question. I would say... You know, just trying to get, you know, this company um, that I started, I wasn't sure how successful it would be. And, you know, every every day I was so nervous. Is, you know, am I going to have a client today? Am I going to meet a bride? And business is doing so well for us, and I could not be more thankful. I swear I cry when I think about it because <laughs> it's doing so good. Um, so I would say, you know, my dream is to one day be the next Martha Stewart. So I hope that... The um, company will continue to grow. We've got some really great events lined up, um, some of which will be featured in um, some local Denver uh, magazines. So I would say keep an eye on those for us. Um, and then wonderful interviews like this. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome. We will definitely be watching you, and I will probably be cyber-stalking you uh, <laughs> for the long haul until my day comes. <laughs> now, um, speaking of cyber-stalk, what is the best way for someone, if they want to reach out to you, um, to get a hold of you? The best way would be email, um, because I'm always out and about on appointments. So email would be my preferable method. You can email me at Ashley, A S H. L E Y at Ashley Nicole events dot com or you can also call me on my mobile which is seven two zero four seven zero two one zero five. And we will have those details along with the website link, um, face I know you have a Facebook. Any any links that you have will all be on the website um, along with uh, your bio and your headshot and so people can really get to know you that way as well but i encourage everyone to go to ashleynicoleevents.com it's a beautiful website um i love all the quirky little added um banners and the copy and all that stuff it just it's it's so fun so girly so beautiful so um 
Wonderful job there. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, it, really, thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, Ashley, thank you so much for being on the show. I just I could keep asking you questions, um, but then we would be talking for hours and hours. <laughs> <laughs> But it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thank you. You too. And to our audience, thank you again for listening. Now get out there and build something beautiful. Until next time, take care.